So in this video, we're going to connect uh, our ASP web page to a database. Uh, and we're going to do that using Visual Web Developer 2010 Express. So to get started, we're going to open a new website or create a new website. Visual Basic, empty website. I'm going to just set it on my desktop and call it state website. Create the folder. And I can see that the site's been created. And if I look at my desktop, I can see the folder there. So things look good. First thing I want to do is create a SQL database. So I'm going to do that using the local SQL server or SQL server uh, SQL Express. It all runs locally here on my, my machine. This would not be a good solution uh, to do and then uh, try to import uh, to, to push it off to a web server. Uh, you'll have to have an enterprise SQL server that it can connect into that your pages can run against. Uh, but this scenario would be good for uh, prototyping, initial development, uh, things like that. So I'm going to right click it and add a new item. I'm going to add a new SQL server database. And I'm going to give it a descriptive name. States. It wants to put the web, uh, the database in the, the web folder called App Data, and that's okay. App Data is a place for databases, uh, any other kind of executable code or anything like that that we have, uh, we can stick in App Data. So yes, let's go ahead and create that folder. And I can now see that I switched to Database Explorer. Uh, I'm in the, the database I just created. Here's the tables, those kinds of things. If I look at Solution Explorer, here's the app data folder it created, States Database. Okay, so I can see it part of as part of my infrastructure. I want to add a new table. And here, these are just the field names for my database and the data types. Uh, so I'm going to have an ID field that's an integer. Uh, that's going to be my primary key and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, and I'm going to add the other fields. Okay, so I've de declared this first one, the state ID, as an integer. Uh, all the rest of them, I've just declared them as NVAR cars. Uh, you would want to be more careful with your data specifications, but uh, just for this sample data, uh, that sample data, uh, that'll be fine. Uh, I do not want ID, the postal code, or the name of the state to be null. I always want there to be something there. But capital bird and flower, it's okay if there is nulls, uh, if they have a null. So I need to define a primary key. State ID is going to be my primary key, so I right click that row and set the primary key. Then I need to, I want to make this the identity and I want it to auto increment. So I'm going to scroll down here to identity specification and open that up. Is identity, I'm going to set to yes. Uh, identity seed, so this is the number we're going to start with. We're going to start with one, that's fine. And identity increment, we're going to go up by one for every row in the record. That's fine as well, every row in the database. Uh, that's fine as well. I'm going to save all that. need to give it a name. If I right click the table, I can do show table data. And I could put in some sample data here.
when I hit enter, it just it commits that line. If I hit tab, it wraps it around. Now, it commits that line and then wraps around. Now, it puts me here in the state ID, but I don't want to put anything there. That's going to automatically increment for me. So I just tab over to the next place, uh, to the next field, which is the code. So I have that information uh, in there. I'm going to save it up. Uh, so now I've got a little sample data in my database. So the next thing I would like to do is write an ASP page that will connect back to this database and display all that data. So I'm going to go to Solution Explorer. I'm going to add a new item, Visual Basic, Web Form. Place code in a separate file, make sure that's checked, and then I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to call this page Grid View because I'm going to put a grid view on the page. And then I just click Add. Okay, it's created my new ASP page and it's opened it up. I want to switch over to Design View. And then in the toolbox, under the data, I want to add a SQL data source. And I can click and drag it, or if I just double click it, it will put it on there. So again, this is our, our uh, class, SQL data source. Uh, this is an object, so it's one instance of a SQL data source. It has to be uniquely identified. This one is uniquely identified on the page as SQL Data Source 1. If I wanted to change that to something else, I could come over here to the properties of the object. All the way to the bottom, ID, I could change that to be something else. And notice it changes. I can certainly just leave it as SQL Data Source 1. It just has to be uniquely identified. All right, so now I will need to connect this uh, to the database. So if I click the arrow, I can configure the data source. I want to connect to the states database. I would like to do a connection string. So I usually start connection strings with CS for connection string, uh, and then the application is for. Specify the columns from a from a table. Uh, so if there were more than one table, they would be listed here. I only have one, so state facts. I just want everything. That's fine. Um, that's maybe star is maybe not the best way. I should maybe select these individually. But for now, for the sample, star is just fine. Here's the SQL that it generates. I can test it. And I see it's returning the, the records out of the database. So my data source is uh, correct, correctly connected to the, to the database. So I can finish. So this just gets to the database and gets the data back here to the page. Now I need a way to display the data on the page. And I'm going to do that, do that with a grid view. So I'll just hit Enter. And then I want a grid view, so I'm here under data. Just double click it, puts it in there. I need to choose a data source. So what do I want this populated from? I want it populated from state's data source, from this one right here. I have those done. I need to save it all up. And then I can view in the browser.
and now you can see that the grid view is going to the data source, getting the data from the from the uh, database and displaying in here. So uh, it's not elegant, but everything is working correctly. So if I want to clean this up a little bit, it was kind of squished, so I'm going to just drag this wider. I don't like these headers, and there's no real need to see this primary key information. That's just used behind the scenes. It's not helpful to the user at all. So on the grid view, if I click this arrow, I can edit columns. These are the fields that are that are being used and then these are the possible fields so I don't really need to use that state ID so I can get rid of it and I don't like the name of these so when I click on one I'm gonna look for a header text that's this information right here and change it to postal code to state name, state capital, okay, that information is saved. Now I also notice that when I go into to these uh, different fields, I can add styling to them. So I can have the header style, which are the fields across the top and I can have the item style which are the date is the data that's populated I can do things like alignment set the width uh, border colors things like that I don't want to do this in here I want to do this through CSS so in a later video I'll show you how to connect your grid views uh, to CSS and be able to format all the grid views at one time if we didn't do it that way, we would have to make the same changes for every grid view uh, all across our site. So I've got the names changed. I can click OK. And I can see the names changed, so that looks good. The other thing I would like to be able to do is to enable sorting and enable paging. So what paging does is when the, the page is full of records, I can click on page 2 and then see the next records and then I can click on page 3 and see the next records now our database is pretty small so paging is probably not gonna take effect there sorting allows me to click on the different fields and have them sorted by those fields so let's take a look at how that works if we click save we'll go back to the browser and refresh so now if I choose to sort by state capital I can choose to sort by state name, postal code, flower. So it's a way of just doing some base level sorting on the data that's coming out. Now again, if this were if I had enough data in the database to fill this up, I'd see a page two. And then when I clicked on page two, it would uh, uh, show me those records, the next records. The other thing that you can do with your data is auto format with your grid view is auto format if I auto format it's just an, a way to change the colors uh, and the display of the text uh, a simple click makes all the changes uh, in those fields that we saw before again I don't want to do this I want to do it through CSS later so I'm not going to auto format but it is an option The next thing that I want to do is to be able to edit the data or delete a row. So in, in order to do that, I need to go back to the data source, configure the data source. Again, selecting star from the, the state facts table. I click on advanced and I want to generate, insert, update, and delete statements. So if I looked at the source code, right now I see the select command so when the data source uh, is is triggered this happens
when I go in and generate the insert, update, and delete statements. Okay, next, finish. Now when I look at my source, I can see that I have a delete command. So this the SQL is delete from state facts where the ID, uh, insert into, update. Okay, so it generates these statements for me uh, and it also uh, marks the parameters. So now that that code has been generated, uh, the SQL code has been generated through the SQL data source. Now when I go into grid view, I can enable editing and enable deleting. Uh, selection, we're not going to use this. Uh, we're going to use hyperlinks and go about it a different way that we'll discuss in a later video. So now that I have editing and deleting, I can save and refresh the browser. And I can see now that I can edit these different fields. After I've made my changes, I can update. I can. These seem to be working correctly. If I don't like that, I can cancel that update. And I can delete a record. Now the one thing I can't do is insert a new record. We'll have to do that in a, uh, through a different method using a details view. And we'll talk about that in the next video. So there you have a way to create a local SQL database, uh, how to populate data into that database, how to use the SQL data source uh, to connect to that database from a web page, and then grid view. So how to take the data that's coming back into the data source and display it to a user in a useful way, as well as generating those insert, update, delete statements, uh, and being able to edit and delete records from the grid view.